Okay, let's go to case number two now. You are shown three consecutive flare images on a 37-year-old female, three months after bari bariatric surgery, and now with confusion, ataxia, and ophthalmoplegia. Give you a few seconds to look at the images. Um, it's just a pattern recognition case here. And let's go to the first question. A deficiency of which of the following is responsible for the disease shown here? A, vitamin B6, B, vitamin B1, C, vitamin B12, all right, that's C is B2, D is B12, and E is B7. Okay, let's start the countdown, please. The music keeps getting better, huh? Okay, let's see how you guys are doing with this question, and the correct answer is B, and that is correct. It's due to a deficiency of thiamine. So I'm showing you again a couple of images from the case. For the second question, which of the following does not result in the disease shown here? A, hyperalimentation, B, chronic alcoholism, C, malnutrition, D, chronic vomiting, and E, ethylene glycol ingestion. Okay, let's start the countdown. Ready? Let's see how you guys are doing. Okay. And most of you, 51% answer E, and that is correct. And here's a case of ethylene glycol ingestion demonstrating significant edema of the basal ganglia and thalami. Actually, in the diffusion-weighted images, the only parts in this patient that were infarcted were the lateral thalami. Curiously, this is an autistic child, a severely autistic child that was not behaving well. The parents lock him in the garage, and he drank the antifreeze. I'm told that the, uh, the antifreeze for the car has a sweet flavor that children tend to like. And curiously, his autism improved considerably after this, and don't ask me how that happened. Okay, let's go to the third question. The diagnosis in this case is A, Marchia Fava Bingnami, B, Osmotic Myelinolysis, C, Wernicke's Encephalopathy, D, Subacute Combined Degeneration, and E, none of the above. Count down, please. Suspenseful. Okay. And the correct diagnosis in this case is C, Wernicke's encephalopathy. Oh, you guys are doing very, very well. Okay, let's take a look at the alcoholic encephalopathies and divide them according to the time that they occur. Within the acute period, we can have Wernicke's, which this is a case of Wernicke's, and the myelinolysis syndromes, which may include the pontine myelinolysis or the extra pontine myelinolysis, including the one that affects the corpus callosum, which we all know is called Marchia Fava Vignami. In the subacute period, you can have involvement of the spinal cord, and I'll show you a case. However, involvement of the spinal cord is not due to thiamine deficiency, to, but to vitamin B12, cobalamin deficiency. And in the chronic period, you can have cerebellar dysfunction in the Corsacob psychosis, which is not an imaging diagnosis, but a clinical diagnosis. In Wernicke, it's like I show you, there's high signal intensity in the mammillary bodies, the fornices, the hypothalamus, the periaqueductal gray matter, and the medial thalami. And uh, this results from high glutamate and hemorrhagic necrosis, which at times can be seen particularly at the level of the mammillary bodies. So here's a case of Marchia Fava Bingnami showing you high signal intensity in the body of the corpus callosum, which is typical, and these patients may also have high signal intensity in the white matter, particularly of the frontal lobes. In osmotic myelinolysis, you get at the level of the mid to lower pons this typical triangular hyperintensity on the T2-weighted images, which can show very, very high signal intensity on the diffusion-weighted images as seen in this case. And in the subacute combined degeneration, it's not the brain that's affected, but it is the spinal cord, and you can see high signal intensity uh, in the dorsal columns of the spinal cord as seen in this case, and burn this case into your mind because it is uh, a favorite case in certain examinations. So, okay. The most common imaging finding in alcoholic encephalopathy is actually atrophy of the superior cerebellar vermis, and here you have two cases. On your left, you see a case that has mild atrophy of the superior aspect of the cerebellar vermis. On your right, severe atrophy of the superior cerebellar vermis in two alcoholic patients, and preservation of the inferior aspect of the vermis, typical findings.